So with distance learning, there's really, um, as you know, all of our students have a Chromebook, and that's going to be their primary uh, tool that they use for their assignments and also to, um, to communicate with uh, teachers and their peers. We ask two things. One, that students are checking Google Classroom on a regular basis, and that's every day. Um, that's, imagine that's sort of the virtual version of their physical classroom. That's where they need to start off every single day. Um, and then as far as the actual live uh, interaction or live instruction, we're primarily going to use Google Meet. And what's nice about Google Meet is what you experience today is that you can't Zoom bomb a Google Meet that's run through Granada. You have to log in as yourself. And so that's why we sent you the email that said, check your student's email to get the login information. Once a student logs into their Chromebook, they can click and go anywhere within sort of the Granada ecosystem. So they don't have to log in every time they go to a Google Meet as long as they've logged into their Chromebook. And they can't log into the Chromebook unless they use their Granada, their, um, excuse me, their Granada password and their Granada login. So I might have a personal Gmail account. It doesn't work on a Granada Chromebook. Okay? Um, on the other hand, their Granada login will work on any computer, any device that you have. So maybe, I don't know, you're out running an errand. Hopefully one day we can go out and run errands. And your student forgets that they've got to log in for a Google Meet at 1030 in the morning. They can log in from any, um, they can log in from a phone, provided they use their Granada um, email and password. If I leave my Chromebook at home and I go um, out of town for the weekend and realize I need to find out, oh, I need to send, uh, I need to finish this assignment. I can log into any computer and access my, um, my files, access my classroom, send a Granada email, that sort of thing. However, I'm not going to be able to participate in every single activity that, school, that teachers may do. So the teachers are going to use certain applications that are only going to work on those Chromebooks. And so that's why we ask that, um, yeah, recognize that you can access certain things um, from the computer, but also that the Chromebook is the primary way that students are working inside their classrooms. Okay? So I'm going to pause there if there's any questions in the chat that Ms. Hellman has not. See. I don't see any. And so what I want to do now is show you what a Google Classroom looks like so that you as a, as a parent and you can, um, you can work with your students to kind of see what they see. So I'm going to go into one of our samples. And this is what students are going to see when they log in. So they're going to see a dashboard that's going to have, let's show you, they're going to see a dashboard. I have a lot of classes because I'm enrolled in a lot of classes. The students will have six classes that they'll be enrolled in. And they'll be able to see uh, what their assignments are going to be that day. It'll show a brief little summary here. And so if I wanted, if this is my first period class, I would start here on what's called the stream page. And this is sort of like the morning announcements page. So you can see, for example, here, uh, students know where they go tomorrow morning. The teacher has posted the video meeting link. They've given a brief overview of the assignment. Um, they also have some of the other sort of like um, annual announcements or information that I want students to always have access to. That's also going to be on what's called the stream. The second part of Google Classroom is what's called the classroom page, which is exactly what it sounds like. This is where Teachers will post all assignments. This is where students will go to get that assignment and to view that assignment. And this, if I click on here, oh, sorry, you should now see a, a, a tab or, or a screen that says Day 11, 720 Water Park. Thumbs up if that's right. I can't tell. Okay, perfect. When I click on that assignment, you should now see the actual assignment, which is in what's called a Google Doc, sort of a Word document or that sort of thing. This is going to give me my directions. This is going to tell me what my assignment is. And in just a second, once I do my assignment, you'll see in the upper right, I'll have a way to turn that in. And so I click on that. And that submits my assignment to my teacher, lets my teacher know that assignment is ready to grade. My teacher will then on, on their side grade that assignment and return that assignment to me. Uh, in addition, the teacher can also add comments to the work that I do on this assignment. 
So the back to here, the classwork page or the classwork section of Google Classroom is going to be where assignments are posted, where students complete those assignments, and where students turn those assignments in. Okay. The third and final piece that students will see on Google Classroom is what's called the people page. That's exactly what it sounds like. Who's my teacher? How do I email my teacher? Who are my classmates? And if I click here, I can email my classmates and communicate directly with them. Okay? Um, some teachers will turn this ability off. Some will turn it on. But students will, um, they'll be able to see who is in their classroom. And as a student, I can email my classmates once I have this information here. Okay, so I'm going to pause there. The nice thing about Google Classroom as um, sort of a, what's called a learning management system, is it's pretty easy to use. There's not a whole lot that goes into it. But as long as students know what they're looking for in here, it's pretty easy to navigate. Our job as a school is to make sure that our, we're setting these up in a way that it is easy for students to navigate. And so we look to you all as, as parents and families to let us know when your student does encounter something that, like, hey, this doesn't make sense to me. I can't find this information on the, on the, uh, the, uh, the Google Classroom or something like that. Okay, I'm gonna pause there because that was a lot and go back to this piece here, which is the two main pieces that we have, Classroom and then Google Meet. And are there any questions that I can answer now that anything that I need to clarify to help you all out? As parents, you're not gonna get your own log into Google Classroom. However, um, we'll post in just a few minutes a link where you can request to receive what are called classroom summaries, which will send you either on a daily or a weekly basis, a summary of all of your, um, all of the activity that happened in your student's classroom. And it'll be a personalized summary that'll have, here's the work that was assigned, here's what was turned in, here's what was missing, okay? That's, that's a good way to really kind of stay on top of things. However, um, as I learned with my third grader this past spring, um, there's nothing like sitting down with your student and just spending a few minutes to learn, okay, to see what they see, right? Um, we have a phrase here that Ms. Holloman has coined many years ago called trust but verify. I trust my, I trust my child, but I want to verify that I'm getting the, the whole story and all the accurate information. And so we encourage you to sit with your student and really kind of just spend a little bit of time to see, okay, what do they see on Google Classroom? Okay. Okay. And so we talked a little bit about need in the beginning, but uh, just a couple more things uh, that we want to stress to students. And this is a, uh, our administrative team early in, uh, I believe, April as we were starting to learn how to use Google Meet. Um, and just to point out that um, Google Meet is a tool. We had never looked at this before March 13th. Um, it just, we had no reason at all for video conferencing. You can kind of imagine if we had turned on video conferencing with no supervision to uh, students, how that would go. And so it was not turned on. Students don't have the ability to create their own video conference. They can only join if the teacher has created that one for them. Um, but really just a few of the key features about Google Meet is are that um, one, students have control over their cameras, students have control over their microphones. We do ask that students follow the teacher's instructions about that. One of the things that we learned is that having that visual connection is so key to maintain, uh, to, to having that, um, to maintaining that interaction to as much as we can having that real classroom feel. And so we do ask students, we're gonna ask you to turn on your camera. We're gonna ask you to unmute your microphone and answer the teacher's questions. We're gonna ask you to um, collaborate and interact with your, with your classmates. And so we ask the students to follow those directions. However, we also know that um, there might be some time when I can't be in a nice office as my background, right? And so we understand that. We ask the students to communicate with the teachers and say, hey, I." I I, it's too loud today, I can't, um, you know, there's something going on, so I need to turn my camera off, I need to mute myself, and I can't participate for whatever reason. And we'll work with you all to make sure that, um, you know, we're being as helpful as we can on that. Um, on the flip side, we also know that even though it might feel like I'm all alone right now, 
I know that I've got at least 64 people viewing me. So I want to make sure that I have a professional appearance, at least from, you know, top up. It's okay to do the newscaster style dress of nice shirt here and shorts uh, on the bottom. Um, but we do ask the students to maintain a professional appearance. We do give them guidance by asking them to follow the Granada dress code, even though they're not here on campus. We do ask them to be aware of what's in the background. Um, there shouldn't be anything that, um, you know, is inappropriate, be it a painting, a picture, or whatever. So make sure that that background is appropriate. Um, and then right now, Google Meet doesn't offer the opportunity to replace the background, but that's coming. And so once that's there, we'll ask students to, 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 take, um, to use that as well, too. So that's Google Meet. That's Google Classroom. Those are the primary tools of, um, that we're going to be using. And so we're trying to keep it pretty straightforward. That being said, there are a lot of what are called synchronous tools or fun or cool things that teachers can use to make the class a little bit more interactive than just a discussion here. So we're going to try one. So we're going to cross our fingers. What I'm going to do right now is I'm going to put a link for you in the chat. And this is a link to what's called a Padlet. Let me just show you what this is. But you can go ahead and start um, clicking on that and following that. But here's what it looks like. You should now see a very nice sort of... Uh, Sunset painting. Everybody got that? So what a Padlet is, is this is a way that I can have like a digital version of asking students a question and getting them all to participate. So for example, you can imagine talking to a class of uh, 30 or 35 students, not everybody's gonna be asked to participate. They might not all raise their hand at the same time. I've taught school before, I remember that. Padlet helps them, if I click here, I can then contribute and answer this question. So give it a try. Follow that link, click on that little plus sign, and your question here is what has been something your students liked about Granada Hills Charter so far? Let me do, you're all stacking up. Let me change one feature on here. I'm not the pro at this. Our teachers are. So once you finish typing yours, um, one of the things that a teacher will do is they'll have the ability to approve that, and that's what I'm doing. I trust you all. So what I could do is turn that off. Yourself. And then I no longer have to do that. So, and right now you'll see they're titled anonymous, so you can kind of, um, sorry. So you can imagine in a class with uh, 30 students, it starts to get quite active. You can start to see how the students, even though they are, um, even though we're not physically together, you can still see that um, everyone's going to have a voice. And that's one of the tools that they have. And like I said, they are way better than I am about managing that um, as far as this goes. But that's a tool that several teachers I know have used so far during STA. 
Um, there's also other things that you can do on here. You might have noticed that um, you have the ability on here. Let's see, if you see on mine, you see mine sort of in the center right now. I could also take a photo of myself and have that be my Padlet that I submit. So, so a teacher could ask, you guys can see me? A teacher could ask uh, students to hold up, say maybe if they're creating some kind of work, they could hold that up to share, like if they're designing something. Um, they could, uh, you can also record a short little video to play up there, they can upload a file and that sort of thing. So there's all sorts of interesting things they can do. And this is just one of the tools that our teachers have. Um, and I hope you saw that it's relatively easy to get going with it. Once you figure it out, if students are doing this on a regular basis, it's gonna be nice and quick and easy for them to share and be part of the class. So I'm gonna go back to um, other synchronous tools that we have. Um, of course, Google Meet's the primary one. Uh, Socrative, which is a um, sort of a question and answer tool that some of our teachers have used so far. And then Google Docs, Google Slides, Google Sheets. All of those tools are very similar to what um, Microsoft started many years ago with Word, PowerPoint. Uh, Sheets is, a, is the version of Excel. And so our goal is that by the time students finish Granada, they're proficient using those those tools, that they know how, um, I know how to create a document in Google Docs, because that's a skill that's going to convert over to, um, to any platform that they use where they do something like that. Asynchronous tools, so these are tools that, teacher, that students are going to use when they're not in the middle of an interactive section like this. Um, we have several video recording apps, um, one's called Flipgrid, a lot of students, I think last week, used that to record their um, experiences during the extracurricular day. Um, students can easily make a video recording of themselves and submit that as an assignment. Um, same thing with Screencastify. Cami is a really cool tool. And what Cami is, it's um, if you're familiar with the PDF, with, with that type of document, it allows a student and a teacher to write on that PDF. I'm going to show you a sample of what that could look like. You should see a poem, the love song of J. Alfred Prufrock. You should see a video of me. What's cool about this is that as a student, I can go in and I can highlight text and I can add comments. I can add a video comment. I can add an audio comment. As a teacher, I can do the same thing. Good morning, everybody. Your assignment with this poem is to read through and identify five phrases that stand out to you. Next to each of those phrases, highlight them. On three of them, create a video comment. On one of them, create an audio comment. And on the last one, create a written comment. Good luck. So what students can do with this, and again, imagine all the, all the, all the neat things you could do. As a teacher, I could go and I could clarify some directions. I could highlight a section that I know students are going to have trouble with. And I could add a video comment to that as well. I could go through and I could add a written comment on here. If I can spell correctly. I could add, um, I can add a voice comment. So I could show students how to properly pronounce a word if there's a difficult word in there. And all of that, I could then turn in as part of a Google Classroom assignment. So I could turn all of that in. And so um, annotation is, is what was called, like if you're doing a close reading of, of, a, of a document or you're doing a close reading here of a poem, um, it's like the, it's a digital way of writing on the document itself. Uh, what's also nice is that all of the students' Chromebooks are touch screen. So I don't have to type everything. I can use this functionality where I can actually go in and I can highlight the text. I can come here and I can make drawings. As a student, I could use a stylus or use my finger and I could come in here and 
highlight and then add a note on there as well too. I can then save it and send it to my teacher. So that's one of those asynchronous tools. So again, asynchronous is assignment activities that students are doing on their own time away from the teacher. Okay, I'm gonna pause there. I'm gonna go back to here. Um, and see if there's any, um, one other, one other one I want to, or two other ones I want to point out here. Peer grade, if you remember, um, you know, when I went to school, the teacher would collect all of the papers, right? Maybe mark out the names. So you don't know who wrote that assignment or who did that math assignment. Then divide them up amongst the class and let the peers, or let, their, let their classmates grade it and give them comments. Peer grade does that digitally. Um, and the teacher will have the option to, I want students to know whose paper this is, or I don't want students to know whose paper this is. And students can give each other comments. And the teacher has an easy way to then grade those comments and then also grade the actual assignment itself. So that's a pretty cool tool. The last one is great. Um, for those of us who have grown, who have, who have children who've grown up with the internet, who've grown up having access to every piece of information that's ever out there, um, it makes writing a research report a much different exercise than we did, right? So what a Google originality report will do is when students create that research report or any type of assignment that they do, they can run an originality report and see how, how much of a plagiarism risk is this assignment, right? And so that'll, that'll say, okay, the language in here is too close to this document and it's going through Google. So you can imagine what it's searching. The short answer is it's searching everything. Not only is it searching what's out there on the internet, it's also searching other work that other students have turned in. So that gives us comfort as, as a school and as teachers knowing that the assignments that I'm giving are original assignments that are being turned back into me. As a student, it's helpful because it helps students develop their, the way that they're synthesizing information, right? Information is not hidden from students. We know they have access to everything. This is about helping them read, read something, interpret it, put it into their own words. And so we want students to use that, that tool. So I'm gonna pause there for a second and see if there are any questions or if anyone wants to raise a hand and ask a question off of, off of mute. Um, so whenever students have technical issues um, whatsoever, um, first thing is always let your teacher know what's going on, right? I couldn't visit, finish this assignment because I kept being I kept getting kicked out of that assignment or whatever, right? Then we have a helpline here that that is um, that's staffed for phone during the regular school hours. It also receives email, and so I'll flip ahead to that because that's a great question. So here's what happens: if you're having trouble, let your teacher know right away, right? Not two weeks later. Not I missed that assignment because oh yeah, I forgot to tell you. Uh, I couldn't log in. My Wi-Fi was down. Contact your teacher. Let them know. Okay. Uh, then contact your help desk. If your email doesn't work, obviously this doesn't. The email doesn't help you. But if you contact your help desk, let them know. Leave a message, and that message gets transcribed as an email that gets sent out to our tech staff, who can then also let teachers know if a student is having trouble. Okay. Um, let's suppose that your Chromebook for some reason doesn't work. We have a, a, a very, we have a lot of extra Chromebooks here that we've purchased for our learner program. And when students are here on campus, the number one issue was my battery died. Okay, shouldn't be an issue at home. Um, but we do want to make sure that if so, for some reason a student's having trouble, they contact our help desk, they'll help troubleshoot over the phone. If they can't solve it that way, They'll let the students know, come in, we have a, we can exchange yours for a letter and repair yours for you. But the goal of this is that students are never without access to that Chromebook. And we've made, um, that's a really big effort on our part to make sure that students always have that access 100% of the time. Um, because we know that without that access, they can't get their work done. They lose that connection to, to us at school, even when they were here. Um, we have it set up in a way so that um, uh, through our library, students don't have to come on campus. They can drive up. We have it mapped out so they can socially distance from each other and exchange and get the Chromebook. And we disinfect our Chromebooks before students have them. We have a, 
a pretty cool UV disinfecting cabinet that we store those bubbles in. Okay, so that's tech issues. Um, as far as expectations and what we've learned about um, live sessions and distance learning so far is that there's a, there's, a, there's a sweet spot. There's 15 minutes is too short of a live session. You're not going to get much done. An hour is a little bit on the long end for a live session. Students are going to lose interest in, in the live session that long, and, and that's difficult for that to be engaging and effective. So you can expect live sessions of about 30 to 45 minutes of sort of active instruction, sort of end to end. And we'll work on a dull schedule that creates time for that throughout the day. Um, students can also expect uh, interaction and collaboration with their teachers and with their classmates. It's not gonna just be a lecture. I listen for 45 minutes, I log off and I go do my assignment. Teachers are gonna, we're expecting our teachers and you can expect there to be that interaction. It happens not all 45 minutes, but you can expect within that time, there's going to be live interaction and building that connection and that relationship with the teacher. Um, and then finally, um, I know we're off campus. We're not all here, but we're still in school. So those policies that we have that make or not a safe place for learning that, um, you know, give students confidence and take those academic risks, those still apply. You know, be it from our dress code to appropriate language, to um, our anti-bullying and all of those sorts of policies that we have, those are still in effect. And we know this is a new environment. Um, we know that students and teachers, and we're all still learning how to interact right now in this. Um, and we also know that the number one phase of 2020 was, I can't hear you, you're still on mute. Um, it's also probably the most annoying thing to hear, oh, sorry. Um, but we do ask students to, to pay attention, and we, we do expect that they're going to get better at, at learning how to um, interact in a video session with, um, with teachers and with their classmates. Um, a little bit more just technology-wise, um, as you probably found out, the Chromebooks are filtered both on and off campus. Um, it does not catch everything, um, but what it does do is it keeps a record of everything. Okay, and so that's a very powerful thing for student, students to understand. Um, even though they might be alone uh, with their Chromebook, they need to have that expectation that it's, it's, a, school, it's a school device. Um, you need to have that expectation that it's used for academic purposes um, and that it is certain sites are going to be blocked. Um, all Internet activity is going to be monitored, and we do have deans who are um, – working on that to make sure that if students have trouble with that, we have um, steps we can take to get them back on the right track. Um, the other piece about it is that we recognize that not all wireless is created equal. Um, you have probably learned that having three or four people trying to share wireless doesn't always work that great. Um, for students who don't have access to wireless at home, we have a T-Mobile hotspot program that we have on campus that provides that for students. We do ask you a couple things about that. Um, because we can't have 5,000 devices, we prioritize students who have no access to uh, wireless or very unreliable access to wireless. Um, however, we also understand that sometimes you might have a router that goes out and it might be out for a week and you might need a temporary solution. And that's okay as well too. So if you ever have trouble getting access, let us know. Our tech team will be happy to help troubleshoot. And then if that's the solution, We'll work with you to make sure that you can become reconnected again. Okay. Uh, the last part I want to show you, I know we're coming up on about 710, is what's called Home Access Center. And what Home Access Center does, and I'll show a short video, is it allows you to view students' progress. You can check on their grades. You can check on their attendance. Um, you can interact with teachers that way. You can email your teachers through Home Access Center. Um, and you can also look at... Um, you know, your child's attendance, their classwork, all that information is in here. Um, if you don't have access to it yet, because for whatever reason, um, it does give you access to students' personal and educational information. So we do need to verify that you are who you say you are. So if you don't have access, email your counselor and they'll work out a time and a way for you to get access to, uh, to this. But I'll show you a short video. It's about, I think, two minutes. It really gives a nice overview of it. And you should hear the sound in just a second here.
As a parent, wouldn't it be great to know your child's attendance, classes, grades, and any discipline issues 24 seven in real time? Welcome to the Home Access Center, your online portal to view everything important for your child's academic success. To start, visit ghchs.com slash parents and click the Home Access Center button. Parent username and passwords are assigned during STA Parent Night. Contact the counseling office if you have trouble logging in. This is your home screen showing child's classes and teachers. If you want to email a teacher, simply click on their link. By clicking these tabs, you can also change the calendar view and see more school links. This top nav is how you can navigate each section. Let's check attendance. Different color codes have different meanings, illness, unexcused tardy, etc. The next section, classes, gives us lots of useful information as parents. Right now you can see all classes and assignments. To view classwork, click in the box Report Card Runs and select All Runs. Then click on Full View and Refresh View to see all assignments. Don't forget you can click this box if you would like to be notified if an assignment's grade falls below a certain average. Clicking on the Career Plan tab gives a more macro level look at your child's path to graduation, all grade levels, courses, and credits. Courses in italics are not complete. It's a lot to see on screen, but we get the entire view. And this last tab shows you the current schedule, courses, teachers, days, periods, and room numbers. Curious about your child's grades? Use the top nav on grades to see the report card, transcript, and even ACT, SAT, and AP test scores. These last sections are to see any discipline incidents under student support, and also to make sure the registration and contact information is current. In this registration section, click the counselor name to contact the counselor. Don't forget, if you have several children attending GHCHS, click here to switch screens for the next child. Information is power, they say and the Home Access Center is your ultimate parent resource. On demand, at your fingertips, 24-7. Start now at ghchs.com slash parents. Okay, well that takes us to the end of what we had uh, scheduled for you all tonight. Um, we do wanna make sure that we answer any questions that you all may have and again, um, we understand this is a new environment for all of us. Uh, the advantage that we have as a school and, and our faculty has is that we've had a Chromebook one-to-one -one program since 2014. And so our teachers have a lot of experience using uh, these tools and using these programs. Uh, the goal is that by the time your student finishes in four years, um, that they're very proficient in working in a digital world, knowing that they're always connected um, and then also having the skills that, that enable them to be successful um, with their next step, college, career, wherever they go after Granada. Um, 